to get us started. All right. Good morning. Go. We have an echo. Good morning, everyone. It's um, 8.34 on July 7. This is the regular meeting of the Town of New Canaan Board of Selectmen. Um, before we start, we have a agenda item, two agenda items to add to the, uh, the agenda, um, one being part-time employee in the town clerk's office and uh, the other is rec track software. I move that we amend the agenda to add those two items. Second here. Uh, all in favor, aye. Where, where's Kit today? Oh, okay. So um, we can add those uh, right after public comment. Um, this is a virtual meeting um, and uh, members of the public who wish to comment um, may do so by emailing uh, BOS distribution at newcanaCT.gov. Um, if we receive emails throughout the meeting, we will read them. Um, first item on the agenda is the uh, minutes for the last meeting of June 23rd, 2020. Any comments, corrections on the minutes? Not, Not here. here. I move we approve the minutes as presented. Second, aye. get seconds. Second. All in favor, aye. Okay, then let's go to the first uh, item we just added to the agenda. Um, the uh, town clerk uh, needs some help with bug life and uh, uh, absentee ballots for the uh, primary in August. And we're proposing to hire Sharon Winter for six weeks as a part time assistant in the town clerk's office. Do I have a, I move we approve that? Do I have a second? Second. Get seconds. Uh, discussion. I think this is this is the time that they're really going to need help. Well, especially since people are taking vacation, so we, we got to fill in for vacation people. Um, uh, all in favor, aye. Second item we added to the agenda was the rec track software from the recreation department. Continuation of a contract with Vermont Systems for 6,462 per per year for the Rec Track software, which supports a number of uh, uh, departments besides Rec on, uh, on online reservations and online payments for uh, programs and permits, etc. Uh, I move we approve this request for 6,462. Have a second. Second here. Discussion. Um, I am. I'm not in opposition, but I sure can't find the item. It's at the end, Kit. If you go scroll all the way down uh, on our tablet to the second to last item, it says "Add in session" and the and the the, the uh, invoice is there. Oh, I see. Our, our you know, it's the town clerk. But I I, yeah. um, I know about rec track, and I I know we need it so. All in favor then? That's unanimous, okay. Next item is Laughlin Community Center. Uh, I'm pleased to report that we're gonna name Aggie Espenwall as interim Laughlin Center Director. Um, I move we do so, I have a second. Any questions or comment, discussion? Um, I, I have a just a thought and that's, that this position is now much more involved with health and human services, et cetera. And when we actually get the director, are we going to be looking for someone that might be a social worker? Well, in the, since we just hired a licensed social worker for human services, we've had discussions in the past two weeks about how human services can work uh, closer together with uh, Lapham as Mel um, used to do. Um, and uh, the new hire is a terrific uh, licensed social worker. We've had conversations with uh, Penny Young and, and um, Dave Hunt, um, and um, we, we're going to wait a number of weeks to see how that new collaboration goes with a new uh, employee who is very experienced from working at a senior center, the Darien Senior Center, um, in addition to being a licensed social worker. So um, we're going to see how it works out in the next uh, two months two and months then make a decision. But does that, how will that interact 
as a head of Lapham Community Center? Well, we have to decide whether Aggie will be appointed as the uh, new director or whether the collaboration with human services uh, social workers will require the need for a different person. But as of now, I, I, I'm reserving judgment. I think the, uh, the strength of the new person we have um, uh, working uh, at uh, Lapham Center and focusing on seniors, both, both Bethany and What's her name, Cheryl? <laughs> the, the new person? Where's Cheryl? Cheryl. Anyway, um, she's been on board. Sorry, Marcy, I'm having problems Marcy, with you. Marcy, Marcy. Marcy. <laughs> uh, she's a terrific hire, and I think we're gonna be able to um, have much stronger collaborations as we used to between Lapham Center and the Human Services Department going back several years. Yeah, Kevin, I would just echo Kit's comments, but uh, you know, I, I think as long as you're working closely with Penny and, and Dave, I, I, I trust their judgment. Um, and so, you know, we'll, we'll, I think we'll give it a go and, and see how it goes for a few months. So I moved, we approve Aggie as interim Lapham Center director. Do I have a second? Did I already, are we in the discussion phase? Do we, we already second that? You already had a second. Okay, all in favor? Okay. okay. Moving on to the GIS, the GIS. software, software. From, uh, tie and buy. Is this a tiger item? Good morning. Brian. Brian. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Uh, Brian and I are uh, kind of joined together, but I'll, I'll present it for uh, both uh, PPW and ladies. This is a continuation of a contract with Tie and Bond for our GIS services. It's broken out into three separate tasks. First task is uh, updates to our tax maps, the assessor's maps that's done on a quarterly basis or when uh, larger parcels are converted. And uh, they uh, also will print out a tax map for us each, each quarter if there's uh, significant changes. Uh, the second is our on-call GIS services, which is probably our most important. Uh, whereby if staff have concerns or questions or we would like to see additional services added to the GIS or additional layers, we can call on Ty and Bond to help us with that. Um, they'll be continuing the Inland Wetlands Mapping Project and uh, some additional work with uh, the Health Department for Private Septic and Wells, uh, continuing to digitize those maps uh, and put them on the server as well. And then the last is they continue to maintain our GIS web hosting. Uh, we have public and a private. We have a private one for the town, town employees, which have uh, some data that we don't want out in the public realm. And then we have a public GIS website that is highly used by um, a lot of the land use developers and uh, people throughout town. So the two first two tasks um, are a number not to exceed $18,000. And then the last is a $6,000 um, web hosting fee for a total of 20, not to exceed $24,000 for the year. This is a renewal of it. Something we've been it's using. a renewal of an existing contract. Ty and Bond has been with us for a very long period of time and has done a great job with our GIS system. It's one of the best in the state. They Ryan. haven't raised the rates either, right, Tiger? No. I don't think they've raised their rates since you began this initiative about 10 years ago. Tiger started this initiative. Okay. I move we approve this uh, renewal contract with Ty and Bond for the Geographic Information System. Oh, well, that's what GIS means. Geographic Information System. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go figure. Another <laughs> new acronym for you. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Okay. Seconds. Any discussion? I have, a, I have a question. I know I know how useful and important this is, but what information does it hold that we're not sharing with the public? There's certain things that we, we, we don't want to have out. There's uh, um, some personal information, just uh, addresses and things of that nature that we might not want to have uh, go forward and then also it's a it's a venue for us to to build and then put out to the public as it goes forward so as it's being built we don't want it out in the public as it's being uh as it's being vetted or baited baited yeah baited you know as, as it's being tested but on the other hand i would i would expect a lot of this information is subject to FOIA if people made specific requests 
it's right. it's all public information anyway. I think what what becomes an issue is how readily accessible we want that information to be. But it's all public information. But until some of that information, say for example, when they uh, they improve their properties, until we've had that um, confirmed and documented in detail with an accurate survey, for example, we don't want to put out misinformation. So until we know we've confirmed that it's accurate, we don't make it available to the public. It's kind of, sort of like a draft. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that work product is not subject to FOIA? Correct. Dra dra drafts are uh, not That's what subject I thought. to FOIA. Yeah. OK, so any questions? Yep, further? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Mosquito Thank you. Management. Is that Tigers too? Who's doing mosquito management? That's John Howe. John on here? Yes, he is. John's by, I'm by phone. Yep. Good morning, John. I'm here. here. All Habitat Services LLC for 9,960, three applications of Vectolex in the storm drains. Correct. So can, can you hear John? A lot. John, can you hear us? Doing. I think we have an audio, audio problem with John. This uh, this is a renewal contract. It's actually um, a state contract with uh, with all Habitat Services. They've held their prices for a number of years with us. It's three separate applications inside the catch basins. They'll go forward with a. You'll see a, a couple of guys on scooters driving from basin to basin and putting the uh, uh, the Vectolex in uh, in the basins themselves. We had a fourth application um, in for last year for Triple E, uh, but we reduced that um, since we were asked to reduce our budget. We reduce it down to the standard three that we've had. If uh, conditions arise whereby we have a concern with Triple E, we will uh, we'll find a way to um, find that additional money for that fourth application. We'll work hand in hand with the health department on that, on that final determination. But right now, we just like to go forward with the standard three. Um, installations for Vectolex um, with all habitat services. Questions for Tiger or John? I'm just, here. Just one, just an observation. Um, and I know how important it is to keep disease down, but there sure don't seem to be many mosquitoes around this year. I'm not the only one to notice that. The dry, been very, very dry. They, uh, you know, they, they give birth in water, so. Um, if we don't have any standing water, we don't have issues or as many issues. You shouldn't have said that, Kit. Yeah, <laughs> we're coming through. We're going to be going through a wet period, which is actually helpful. We um, need rain. Yeah. Uh, I move we approve this uh, contract with All Habit Services LLC for 9960 for three applications, as Tiger described. Second? Second here. Any discussion? All in favor? Go get mosquitoes, John. <laughs> Thank you. Farm Road Field Project. This is Maria. Good morning. This, this has been a long time coming, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. Um, a section of the, hi, a section of the Farm Road Fields uh, adjacent to the New Canaan High School are poorly draining. And in the past, this area has been modified with the addition of subsurface under drains, which helped in providing enhanced drainage the subsurface under drains though are no longer operating sufficiently and the field remains wet after rain events. The town of New Canaan solicited proposals to perform play field drainage improvements, including the maintenance of the existing under drain system and the installation of five additional rows of new under drains. The play fields would then be restored um, to its grass turf. Bid packets were picked up by three contractors and bids were obtained by two contractors with the lowest receipt from Hussey Brothers Excavating LLC, who proposes to perform this work for a fee of $33,325.01, plus a 15% contingency of $4,998.75 for a total of $38,323.76. We recommend that the contract be awarded to Hussey Brothers Excavating LLC. Hey, Maria, I, I'm not sure you were around, but do, do, do you recall when the original under drains were put in there? I mean, that, that fields, those fields 
plural have been um, right when you know wet when for I met years and, right it's fifteen to twenty years ago that the last under drain system went wow. in. They were actually installed um, um, at, along the same time as the irrigation system was put in. It was the same right. contractor. Yeah, because it's been bad for years. And you're right, Kevin. I, it's, it's, it's a wonder that we've, this hasn't come up as an agenda item over the years sooner rather than, uh, than now. But I'm very much in favor of, uh, of this initiative. Kit, any questions? No. I have a question. Why did, why did someone put one cent on a bid? That was his mobilization cost right. was the one cent. Basically, basically, he was saying it's zero dollars for him to mobilize. <laughs> they built it in somewhere else. Sometimes it's just a little bit of play back and forth. Okay. Uh, I'm in favor of this, so I move we... Uh, uh, do we already move this? Mm, I don't think so. I move we approve this uh, uh, contract with Hussey Brothers excavating for a total of 38,323.76, which includes a contingency for the field drainage yeah. improvements at the Farm Road uh, bah, 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 athletic field. Yeah, I'll second. Further discussion, Kit? Nick? Yeah. Okay, all in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you, Maria. Thank, Thank you. Bill, are you up for a playoff? Yeah. Program? Yep, I'm doing the roof. Um, so uh, we currently have uh, funds available in the uh, current budget year to replace the roof at the Playhouse Theater. Um, there's been very a lot of problems over there. That, that roof has been leaking. Uh, it's in bad shape. The cupola uh, needs a little work up there too. Um, so we'd like to uh, get your approval to contract with uh, Wasky Associates uh, to do the engineering and the, um, uh, the design of the roof system up there. For sixteen thousand nine fifty, uh, was asked. Well, Wesky Associates has uh, been part of uh, the team for since two thousand and twelve, um, when they worked alongside K and G Architects back then. When we did the police department powerhouse, the Canaan Nature Center, Ed Building and Visitor Center. And also, they just recently done the Highway Department, uh, New Canaan Daycare, and the Ambulance Corps. A total of seven projects they have behind us. Uh, their pricing has been consistently. Uh, Percentage-wise, uh, very well, around 10%, uh, which or less, actually, 10% less of the uh, soft cost. So uh, we'd like to move forward and um, get this designed and get it out to bid and uh, try to get this uh, roof uh, done before the winter sets in. Is this essentially to do an RFP for the project? Excuse me? Is this essentially to do an RFP? Yes. Well, uh, no. Yes and no. It's a part of it. Uh, they got to go out there. We got to do some probes. Um, they're going to uh, see how, you know, what actually needs to be done up there as far as the picture roof, uh, meet today's codes. Uh, when you do a roof project, you have to bring it up to code for the most part and make sure it's safe. Um, they're going to do the whole design, get a plan, bullet point plan, um, and they'll put the bid documents together. And then they will also review the bids for us when they come in. And then once the project starts, they'll also uh, do inspections, make sure everything's being done according to the plan. So I have a question. So this, we're going to be talking about the purchasing uh, protocols um, shortly. This is about a $20,000 project, just under $20,000. How would this fall? And I guess this is for Linda or for Tiger, for Billy, um, within the, the parameters of the new, um, you know, purchasing procedures. And whether that was, whether those were followed in this particular case. This is considered a purchase, uh, professional services. So yes, we did follow the policy itself. Okay. Even though it's not adopted yet. Right. Right. And what are we thinking in terms of um, cost of the actual roof replacement? It, the budget was uh, for that was approximately 200,000, I believe. Off the top of my head, it was around 200. It was, two, it was 233 was the was the budget for it so we're we're under we're under the 10 percent or um realm yeah it's normally 10 to 15 percent for design services and bill actually bill uh went back to watsky and asked him to reduce his price by a thousand dollars so uh so it's a very good price from from a very good um engineer and what's the timing of this 
Uh, well, if, if yeah. approved today, we'll get them on board to start design services, and uh, hopefully they'll have something put together uh, in a month or six weeks, and uh, we'll get it out to bid. I'd like to have a uh, fall project. I'd like to have a project right now, to be honest with you, because the theater's closed, but yeah. that's not possible. So uh, we'll have to work with the uh, theater, too, as far as um, if they're reopening when they're showing the movies. I don't think people appreciate a lot of hammering going on when they're watching a movie, so we'll have to work with them closely on this. But the theater, definitely, we'd like to get it done before winter if possible. And the theater, and I guess this is really for Kevin, the theater is closing really because they're running out of movies to show. Is that right, Kev? That's what I just read this morning in the paper. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't realize. I would expect to that we're not clamoring to go to the movies right now. Right. But, I'll, but also, not, new movies are coming out <laughs> because Hollywood has been shut down, so. Yeah. Okay. Actually, on, that, on that point, I didn't realize that uh, until I read the article in this morning's paper that uh, they've shut back down, which suggests to me we need to consider um, waiving the July rent. Right. If they, if they have no revenues, we, we, we ought to talk to them about it. They did send us a letter in the very beginning saying that, in their view, the force majeure clause did not apply. Right. Or did, I'm sorry, did apply. Um, well, they did. Yeah. But that was my next question was if they're not going to be in business, they're not going to be making any money. So. Right. So I think we have to work with them, and I suppose um, we can wait. Uh, we'll communicate with them. Bill, you haven't communicated with, with them about the lease, have you? Uh, with uh, with them, no. For July, anyway. So we, as with the other, as the six or seven or eight other tenants, um, we forgave April, May, April, May, and June rent, um, and um, it looks like you know all the others are back in operation except for the dance academy. Um, and they had prepaid their rent anyway for the six months. Right. They, they got prepaid. They prepaid. They want to pay twice a year because they want to uh, make sure the rent's covered. They get twice a year, they get their grant money. And right. uh, they follow the same schedule as a school. Yeah. And, so and, are we going to be reimbursing them or giving them credits or what? If they prepay? Giving them a credit for their prepayment for April, right. April and June. Um, okay. So we just have to work with these folks like, like a lot of landlords are to try to keep them viable. Yeah. I'd rather have an interested existing in a, than a uh, empty space. Well, and it's nice to have a playhouse in town. Right. So all that said, we need to hire Mr. Watsky Associates Inc. for uh, 19,493. Um, so moved, do I have a second? I'll second, but I have a question. It seconds in question, yep. How complicated is the roof up there, never having actually walked it? Um, well, it's it's an interesting roof because there's, there's, there's like four pieces to that roof. There's the front gable end that you see from the Elm Street oh. side. Then they have the big flat roof up there, which has some slight pitch and has a lot of air conditioning equipment up on it. And then there's the two lower roofs on each side. And actually, there's even another piece at the back roof that covers a lot of the mechanical equipment. Um, it has been leaking. The um, It's an old structure, as you know, uh, with plywood underneath it. So that uh, that's why we really need these guys on board, because we want to make sure structurally there's nothing going on up there that we don't we can't see, right? And so another piece of this would be we have to do some roof probes, which is standard procedure when we do any roof to check the integrity of the roof, the, the, what it's made of, and also uh, if there's any um, uh, environmental issues. So that'll uh, also be, that'll be done as we go forward, so. I was just questioning whether we really needed a consultant, but we do. Yeah, uh, not only that, these consultants, are all, um, Luigi who works for them, who's been working on a lot of our projects, uh, he's also a licensed architect, which uh, is uh, much helpful on the details of uh, the eaves and what have you. So uh, they do great work. They really do. Also, did I recall, are we possibly going to put solar on that roof? It's up for discussion. Yes, we, we're having it evaluated. That was part of our, that was part of the, the RFPs that we just received was to was possibly put solar on top of the playhouse and then feed either the playhouse or the teen center. Since the, since the town hall annex. Town hall annex, sorry. The town hall annex has too steep a roof to accept solar. Correct. We thought we could benefit from having uh, uh, solar that would connect since we own the contiguous property. Anyway, we're going to look at that. Right. Not, that was that was part of the RFP that was just received yesterday. Uh, so now it'll be evaluated by MHR and by Joe Zagorinsky uh, with a uh, with a thought. 
for next week to come back forward. Will we we'll consider that next Monday at the advisory committee? At the advisory committee, that's correct. Buildings and infrastructure advisory. Correct. If you want to tune in and see what we get. Um, so I think we had a motion and a second. All in favor? For Watsky? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Tree Warden, Tiger? Yes. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Bob went out to bid um, for his latest round. He had 11 um, items on it, uh, 11 separate areas of work. We received two bids, uh, the low bid being Olmstead Tree for 14250 The other bid was for Mill River Tree at 15440 This did go out to six separate bidders. <laughs> Um, but only two responded. Uh, we'd like to go forward with Olmstead for fourteen thousand two fifty. Is everything we're doing here the twenty twenty one budget now? This will be twenty twenty one. That's correct. Going forward, did we did we spend all the money for tree warden? Uh, the the last of the bills are coming in, but it was very very close. Last year we spent uh, right up to the right up to the allotment, and this year will be very very close as well. Any questions for Tiger on tree pruning and removal of various trees at various locations? I think we're in better shape tree-wise than we've ever been because we've kept kept this up over the years. And uh, I, I would agree. I, the, the call volume has definitely reduced um, right. over time. Uh, Eversource has been helping us with that because they've done a lot of uh, – tree trimming, enhanced tree trimming throughout their, uh, they've had a, a much more of a look in town as far as uh, going out there and being proactive uh, with their tree trimming throughout town. So we've seen that benefit as well, but you're right. Um, you know, like I said, call volume is down. So being proactive is much more right. in our favor. Right. But we're not planting a lot of trees. Uh, we did pretty well this year. In, in past years, you're correct. But in this year, we did, working with the Beautification League, we planted uh, the Gold Star Walk trees. We planted trees behind here on, uh, at, the, at the Playhouse in Park Street parking lots. Uh, we did some additional work around Mead Park uh, and then uh, in Irwin and others and in Waveney. So we, we did actually quite well this year as far as the number. But if you look at a, on a Overall basis, we are definitely in the negative as far as how many we take down versus how many we plant. However, our tree canopy is probably one of the healthiest in the state as far as if you look at tree cover uh, for you know municipality, our tree cover is quite extensive. I uh, I move we approve this fourteen thousand two fifty for Olmstead Tree. Do I have a second? Second. Further discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you, Tiger. Oh, thank you. You uh, you you went past uh, the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Number eight. number eight. I did. Let's go back to number eight. Back to number eight. That'll be Jimmy. Jim. Good morning. Uh, good morning. This is our famous twenty thousand dollar a year zinc and phosphorus study, engineering study. Uh, yeah, this is our annual. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, this is our annual agreement uh, for professional services with Amazon, uh to the phosphorus removal permit renewal. Uh, we've been working with them for 25 years or over the, than that. And we still haven't found an answer. <laughs> no, no, there's, there's no, there's no uh, technology out there to get. Zinc limits, uh, phosphorus. We've done that in house. Uh, we didn't have to do the upgrade, but uh, right now it looks good. As to in the future, we don't have to worry about the zinc, and unless technology catches up to it, no one sees that happening. Right. So, uh, get Nick. I think you're both familiar with this annual. Yes. Many years. <laughs> and again, we're not spending the total twenty thousand. Uh, Number for uh, as a retainer. Uh, okay. Any questions further for Jim? 
None here. I move to approve the ACOM $20,000 professional services contract. The reduction of the ink and phosphorus at the wastewater treatment plant. Second here. Further discussion? All in favor? Thank you, Jim. Yep. Now we got the wood chipper. Yes, yes. the wood chipper. Uh, this is a replacement for a wood chipper from the highway department. The existing wood chipper was actually uh, given to the highway department by the parks department somewhere around 20 plus years ago. Um, it's probably one of our most important pieces of equipment now that we're gonna be coming back in storm season. So we'd like to replace that piece with uh, a piece from Westchester Tractor, uh, West Tractor 55,655 It's an Intimidator 15 XP Brush Bandit. Uh, this quote is actually part of a source well contract. So it's part of a consortium of bidding. Um, so it's sort of like a state bid as well. That's why we have uh, the, only the one quote. Uh, we'd like to purchase it through Westchester tra Tractor. Our, our uh, mechanics have reviewed the this piece of equipment like it uh, has specified what they wanted you know asked for what they wanted they like exactly this model and i would like to go forward with the purchase questions for tiger i mean wood chippers are kind of dangerous mm. to begin with you think naming it an intimidator is like overkill like, <laughs> i would think so yes <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> i mean really, really? <laughs> we only have one of these, right? right. We only have. What was, the, what, what was the name of the the one that's being replaced? <laughs> I don't know. The, the paint's gone. I have no idea. <laughs> does that no, mean Parks sure doesn't have one? Parks does not have one. Parks has one as well, but we we had we had gotten one from Parks from prior. We really need two. Yes. Yes. We really need two. <laughs> All right. Any question? Further questions? About the intimidator. <laughs> yeah. I'm. I move we approve this. Fifty-five thousand six fifty-five forty-seven with Westchester Tractor Inc. Second. Second. For the discussion, all in favor? That's unanimous. That's unanimous. Thank you, Tiger. Thank you. Are you? I think you're going to hang around for the purchasing policy. Yes, uh, we are. Insurance. Tom, are you presenting insurance or Cheryl? Well, Tom and Cheryl will do that, but I don't want to follow the intimidator. <laughs> Let me see if I can put this up. Can you see that? Yes. Yes. Everybody see that? What we're what we're talking about here is uh, LAP and workers comp. Uh, the LAP is liability auto and property. If you look at, can you see line four in column? That's that's the quote that we got for next year uh, for the LAP. That's in about two and a minute. Uh, the year before, uh, it's broken down between the town and the Board of Ed, so you can see the total there. The other numbers will come during the year. The reimbursable deductible reimbursements will come here. Uh, so you'll see that we're, we're down on LAP about 2.5%. Um, Cheryl, do you want to cover workers' comps? I, as you can see from the numbers, um, we did go up, uh, but over when you look at over the six years, uh, the yeah. increase has only been about 5%. Um, I think we've been working very closely with KERMA um, to make sure that our department heads are doing everything they can to make sure that their employees are safe. Um, we have put a safety committee together that Tiger chairs, and we meet every two months and look at injuries and what we can do as a town. So. I think overall um, we are doing well. This is a really good. This is a really good story, um, particularly on the comp side. I, my guess, Cheryl, is if you went back to fiscal year 15, 15, 14, 13, you know, it would those numbers would have been higher as well. Is that correct? That is correct. We have come a right. long way in right. fifteen years. <laughs> If you look at the rest, then the, uh, the other category will come during the year. We'll get, we'll get uh, uh, quotes on that. The uh, time and the tax collector, fiduciary pension plan. And all the way down now, we're at 138,750. Uh, that's not final. I project that we're going to be maybe up about 1% this year. Uh, you can see the changes at the bottom over the past several years. Uh, right down, up, 
down, down. The last, you know, down 5%, three and a half is pretty good. Uh, we're exceptionally, they, they do, I believe, they do 350 different school districts and towns and other public. Is this net, don't we get a dividend back from them? We do get a dividend. I don't show it on here. We get a dividend. It was 120,000. Uh, Kerma is a not-for-profit. It is a mutual company. So, um, and like I said, it was 100 last year. We would expect you know something along the, those lines this year. Uh, but Cheryl can speak to it. I think the service that we get when when we have a claim, and we're done. I mean, they they just work these claims. Um, they're really fantastic. It's a purchasing group. Right. We've been very happy with their service. It's a, it's a not-for-profit purchasing group pursuant to the Fi Federal Liability Risk Retention Act of 1986, which addressed the liability crisis. And, and these numbers are really good. But they do carry the risk. I, I assume they may be insured, but they, they have 100, 150 towns in Connecticut or more. Right. Correct. Right. Right. Towns and cities, so. Anyway, let's renew the, for another year the uh, workman's comp and the lap policies for the numbers presented on our tablets. I move we approve the request. Second? Second here. Further discussion? Kit? None. Okay, all in favor? That's approved. Thank and you. Purchasing policy. So, so, Kit, I know talked to Tiger and Lunda. And um, Kit's proposed a change, which I don't agree with, and I wanted to have um, some discussion about it. The other changes were on the tablet last time that came from Connor and Davies. And um, so, Linder and Tiger, could you? I mean, this is the only change that we're, we need to discuss. Or, Nick, do you have other items you want to discuss about the person? No, I, I, I wasn't clear, Kevin, with the black line, um, whether this was rep representing final Connors and Davies language. I mean, there were some placeholders, um, you know, must yeah, I, provide signed bid waiver form. Yeah, I thought some of it was kind of cryptic. That, that, uh, yeah, yeah. And I didn't know, I mean, at what point are we going to see kind of the, what we think is final version and I'm not sure. This so let is... me, sure. Let me walk through and what, um, basically what O'Connor Davies um, told us was to accompany the policies. These were things that we needed, we needed to have with the policy. And so I'll begin with, I'll just go through the documents. So if we go to page four. These are, these, these are really, are first, these are really procedural, Linda, as opposed to policies. Right. So yeah. we can choose to either include that, I mean, we could strike that out, but I just wanted to highlight where their comments were made and what it was in relation to, so there's some context. So for example, um, throughout the document, you'll see that they say, the policy says that there's some bid waivers in case of emergencies and, and those types of situations. And what they're recommending is, in the event that you are um, waiving um, any parts of these, there should be some type of form that we need to put together that should be included with that document. And so I included that there just so that you knew where those documents were, but not necessarily that that text um, is necessarily to stay with, within the document. And maybe I could yeah. have done this differently. Yeah, no, no, from a procedural standpoint, Linda, I, I agree with their, their comments. You know, for example, must provide signed bid waiver form among supporting documentation. And I think, I think that's correct, whether that goes into this policy or not. Uh, if it does go into this policy, and perhaps it should, I think there should be more of a declarative sentence with respect to that substantive uh, requirement. And 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 uh, in other places, we have the same issue. It's just it's just trying to get this um, in final form. Um, but I agree, with, uh, Kevin. It's less, less a policy issue than more kind of a procedural issue. You know, this document has a lot of procedure as well as policy in it. Finance department procedures that go along with policies. So, 
I mean, one of, one of my biggest um, issues has been addressed, which is it, a prior draft. It, it basically said that you have to get three quotes via email, telephone, or otherwise. And I think the point I made is you can ask for quotes, but you can't command people to give you a quote. And we just so we saw that with the tree, the tree, tree work. Yeah, I think we had five or six vendors that were reached out to only two provided quotes. So you just need to use best, best efforts when you can to get quotes and we can talk about them. The pick points is in terms of 5,000, 10,000, whatever. And I think that's what Kit was um, based upon her comments at our prior meet, one of our prior meetings had indicated she was concerned about that. So on that point, my concern would be that, you know, Tiger primarily um, and uh, other managers as well um, often have relatively small matters that don't justify the time and the trouble to ask for quotes. It's sort of like when you're doing a project around your house um, for, for $3,000, you know, you, it's just too small to go out and get quotes. Um, and we have a lot of these small contracts. So to me, it's a question of whether you trust Tiger's judgment or whether you're going to force them to do something which is kind of an annoyance and kind of kind of almost silly in some cases. Um, uh, but that's the that's the decision we have to make. I would I would give Tiger the discretion up to ten thousand dollars to decide um, whether he needs to uh, uh, obtain quotes uh, and leave it to his discretion. The other thing is, um, I mean, I. I on many, on several occasions, I've rejected things that are brought to me because they're too high, and I say to Tiger, I, don't, "I simply don't want to do this. It's too high." Not often, but you know, so it's not as though Tiger is the only one that uses discretion. But um, so I, you know, it's just a philosophical philosophical decision: how much discretion do you want to give a trusted manager, and um, and not kind of create a, a burden that certainly applies to larger contracts um, and where generally it's worth the effort to go out and request multiple bids for something. But, but, but to, you know, Kevin, I, I, I mean, again, I know this is um, Connors and Davies um, rec, uh, co comments, but they seem to be internally consistent at certain places. I'm looking at purchases 5,000 to 10,000 Second bullet point, quotes are recommended but not required for this threshold. Fourth bullet point, multiple quotes must be requested. No, but this is not, this is not O'Connor Davis. This is Kit's suggestion. Oh, this is Kit's language? These are Kit's language? Yeah. yeah. Okay, hey, that's, what, that's not, because I don't have a black line that shows different levels of- Well, again, I didn't know, I, I didn't know that Linda took Kit's suggestion and put it into the draft. That's why I would have preferred we just teed the issue up as, uh, you know, because you and I have, you know, quite honestly, I left this to Linda and Tiger. I haven't made, made many changes myself, but um, uh, and there's been a lot of input on this through the advisory committee and through the Connor Davies. And but I do think this is just a philosophical issue as to how much burden you want to put on daily work for, um, which in large measure is the judgment to be made by professionals as to how much uh, how, how useful it is to go out and get quotes on a relatively small item. And by the way, the red line on page 10 has not been brought through to page 11, which is the chart that um, O'Connor and Davies suggest to be added. So that we, we have to make the change anyway to either add it to the chart or simply delete it from page 10. Your well, call. look, I, yeah, I think, I, think, I think we're talking about, and Kip and, and Kevin, please correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think the sweet spot that we're talking about is purchases between 5000 and $10,000. Is that correct? Five thousand to ten thousand multiple quotes must be requested. Right. So, kid, is that that? That's what you're. Well, I would. I. To me, five thousand dollars, even for a town, is not a throwaway. I trust Tiger, fully. But will we always have a Tiger? You know, this is a matter of of uh, codifying what we do. And to be uh, clear, right now. Tiger, as a matter of course, whether it's an internal policy or not, you are getting multiple quotes between 
five and ten thousand. Is that correct? We try to, yes. Okay. It's you know, but the the, so the threshold's been rising, you know, as we go forward as far as trying to get anything under, you know, anything under five thousand dollars. So the thought was that we would apply what was normally the zero to five to the zero to ten. Right. I mean, I, I, look, we're always, it, it's a balance, right? We're trying to save the, always trying to save the town money. And yet we're trying to streamline, you know, Tiger's work because he has a lot on his plate. Um, I mean, if, 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 if you're already doing it, I mean, <laughs> I kind of agree with, I, I have to, I'm going to be honest with respect to home, you know, work around the house. I, I used to, kind of the old new can way just you know you use somebody for years and you, you keep using them and that you like them and you do a good job and, and then you find out that you're paying double what, what other people i think the mom's facebook page has been very helpful in identifying um you know folks th to do stuff around the house um, um and and whether it's painting or this or that and i think um I, I mean, I, I, I hear you, Tiger, but I'm, I mean, I do. I mean, Kit, to her credit, has from day one been a maven about, um, you know, trying to save a few dollars here, save a few dollars here. If, 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 if you've been doing this over the years and it's not too much of an imposition, I guess I would kind of err on the side of, you know, the, the you know, LBJ used to say, you know, 100 million here, 100 million there, it starts to add up. Um, we are talking about thousands, not hundreds of millions, but, um, you know, if, if, if you can do it, if you can continue to do what you've been doing and not have it interfere, I mean, are you getting more, is there more bids that are being, uh, you know, in terms of to the sheer volume of, um, work between five and $10,000, has that gone up materially over the past few years? So it such to, such as to make more work for you, it has gone up. That's that was the reason to increase the threshold from the zero to five to zero to ten. So that has gone up. You know the the, the lower threshold we're not seeing as as uh, as prevalent as the five to ten threshold. So every you know costs rise over time, right? So that's basically where we're at. So we were trying to apply the same thought process as we move forward, and as you know, this isn't just for this year; it'll be for years going forward. But uh, we, we, well, we, 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 yeah, I guess let me go back to Kit because I, Kit, I think this is your language, and I, I, I think it is. Um, and I and I made the point. I thought it was Connor's, Davies language, but that, that you've got two bullet points here that seem to be inconsistent. Where on the one hand you're asking, and I just want to understand what your position is. You, you seem to be saying quotes are, are recommended but not required, but then you also say multiple quotes must be requested. Is it, do, which, which one are you advocating? Are, are you asking me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, and listening to uh, why would we not go five to 10 um, requesting multiple bids? I just okay. think it's... Okay. Good okay, call. so so the second bullet point is 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 should it should really come out because it says quotes are recommended but not required. So I think I think you're I think you're saying no, that that's not that bullet point. It's the fourth bullet point that's 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 appropriate. Which 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 to be clear, changes the um, I'm sorry keeps keeps existing policy right, Tiger. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, there's not going to be a situation in five to ten where we're not going to get a quote we're going to get a quote. We need to have something written anyways for the first selectman to sign. So it, it's, it's not a question of, uh, of the second bullet. It was more the third bullet or the fourth bullet as far as, right. Right. Uh, you know, normally from the, from the zero to five, we would get one quote. If it was good, we would go forward. Now, you know, the thought was to have that beat at zero to 10 kid would like us to request multiple in that from the five to 10 range, instead of just having it be where we can come with one. But there'll never be a situation. There shouldn't be a situation where bullet number two, where we come to Kevin and say, "Hi, I want to spend sixty-five hundred dollars, but I don't have anything written down." I would have something written, regardless. But if we're not talking about people having to submit 
you know, sealed bids, you know, just a telephone call, just something to find out what the market is. And yes, we all think we know what the market is, but still it's a good idea to find out what it really is. How about, how about as a general rule, multiple quotes should, as opposed to must be requested, to give you a little wriggle, wiggle room for those instances where, I mean, because at the end of the day, I know you're going to do the right thing. I know Kevin is going to be, you know, on top of this and whatever. He is. So what are, what are we saying? Is this in the... Uh, I would change the word. 5,000 or 5,000 to 10,000? We're just talking about, I think we're just talking about five to 10,000. I don't think we're talking about purchases up to 5,000 or the process and procedures with respect to those purchases above 10,000. It's just a five to 10,000 range. To recap, the existing policy is whether it's a desk draw, drawer procedure, uh, Tiger does get on a regular basis multiple quotes for projects between five and $10,000. You have suggested that that be codified, that they must be required. Tiger and Kevin, I think, are saying, you know what, um, you know, in terms of workload and, and, and case management, it would be better for him if he could have some wiggle room um, to, not to not be required to get multiple qu quotes, although I think he's just indicated that it would be rare in the instance where he wouldn't get at least you know, one or two, uh, you know, a couple of quotes for a particular project. Is that right, Tiger? Yes, sorry. And I'm trying to <laughs> split the baby here. I don't know, and, and just say maybe the, the bullet point should say as a general rule, as a general matter, multiple co quotes, um, you know, should be requested as opposed to must be requested. And that's up to 10,000. Yes. Just five to 10, actually. How about multiple quotes should be requested where possible? Yep. Yep. I could do that. I think we have a winner. <laughs> and that change also has to be made, Linda and Tiger, on the, uh, on the chart. Any, okay. further, any further comments or changes you'd make on the policy or can we vote on it? Um, backing up, if I may. Um, Nick started out talking about the cases where we say the town must receive uh, bids. And there's certainly cases where they can't. Well, it says they must request, it must request. It doesn't say must, must request. request. Yeah, I think they changed that kit. Um, they, I did see must request, and that, that, that was the point I was making earlier, was uh, you don't want a situation where you have to, you can't do a project unless you get three quotes. You can't make people give you a, give you a quote. So it, it, I, I think that was just a kind of an internal oversight well, on a drafting. Maybe I'm, I'm reading the wrong thing, but on page 11, um, you see where it says uh, it's a chart. 25,000 to 49,999. Number of bidders must obtain three quotes, written or verbal, then documented. Yep, that's a good catch. It doesn't, that doesn't, that chart doesn't, com, doesn't comport, uh, comport with the changes that have been made in the, te in the text, in the procedures, because those, they do, we have changed it to must request. So right, I think, we, have, yeah. I think yep. we, we, we changed the bullets, but we didn't, we didn't go back and change the tab, the table. <clears throat> just, just the table. Outside. Right. So we'll update the table to reflect the changes on page 10 so that they marry each other. And just to be clear, I mean, look, I, I think this is a, a very good policy and, and I applaud all of those, uh, Kevin, Linda, Tiger, others that, that you know, that worked on this, it really is comprehensive. It's, it's high time that we have something like this that is, um, that is so comprehensive and um, is in the best interest of the town of New Canaan. Um, so I'm very much in favor of this. 
Melinda would like this, this to have been approved before the end of the fiscal year, but he wants to be able to tell the auditors that, auditors that it's approved. And uh, so I move we approve the draft with the cha changes we just uh, discussed. And uh, we'll circulate the final um, for yep. re review, but not approval at the next meeting, just Good. to make sure they incorporate what we discussed. I will second that, Kevin. For the discussion? No. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank God we have a purchasing policy. Thank you very much. Um, financial update. Um, you're going to do a financial update next Tuesday for the Board of Finance. Belinda, do you, um, can you, can you just give us kind of a bottom line on what your closeout, I mean, do you have a more updated number beyond what you're going to give to the Board of Finance next week? Or sure. Um, not beyond what I'm going to give the Board of Finance. I, 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 um, <laughs> Anything, are you going to have more for the Board of Finance next week or, or is this? Yes, um, I will have more for the Board of Finance next week. We're, we're closing out. Um, we've, um, we're, we're pretty close to having close to final numbers. Board of Ed obviously being a big chunk of the budget, uh, they typically go through August with some of their payments before things are closed out. Uh, but as far as a bottom line number, I know initially we were looking at um, a fund balance drawdown of anywhere between half a million or so, that number has, has come down somewhat. So right now we're in the 350 uh, threshold that includes COVID expenses, which are going to be reimbursed. And therefore, um, I think we're going to end, uh, end the year pretty much balanced, where our actual revenues are going to match our actual expenditures. Um, there's some additional savings from the Board of Ed. I was talking to uh, Dr. Keating yesterday. Uh, we'll know those for sure, uh, but she indicates that the projections that we have in here are, are somewhat conservative, so there may be some additional savings from the Board of Ed. Um, and therefore, at minimum, the year is gonna break even between actual revenues and actual expenditures to where we, uh, we may possibly not even draw down on the fund balance uh, this fiscal year. Which, which is which is a good which is good. It's beyond what we had anticipated initially, especially given that that also includes COVID expenses, which hopefully will get reimbursed uh, next. And contingency is being again. taken down by contingency is being taken down by the uh, DBW contract. Yes. And I know legal fees are coming in substantially less than we had budgeted. So. And legal fees are coming in less. Um, at the Board of Finance, um, I will actually have line items so we could actually go through each of those line items and, and look at individual departments and where each one came uh, budget to actual uh, year to date and what we're projecting the year end will be. Okay, well, you're welcome to watch the uh, more extended presentation next Tuesday to the Board of Finance. Um, moving to legal fees on our tablets, so just one small item, which is, I move we approve that legal item. Kit, Nick, do you have any questions? I, I already seconded. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Further discussion about the, the uh, one small legal item on the tablets? All in no. favor? That's unanimous. Contracts under 5,000. I think there's four or five or six small contracts there, mainly renewals. Um, no questions about the contracts? That brings us to general matters, update and discussion of various town matters. Hey, Kev, can I just bring up out calls because uh, I know there's been some chatter on that. I, I thought maybe you would, might be doing one last night, but um, you had indicated over the weekend and I think you were collecting data and maybe you didn't have a chance to to get the data that you know you wanted um, for purposes of the out call. But I, I, I do think that with the new spikes that we're seeing, um, thankfully elsewhere, um, although, you know, query as to whether we're starting to see spikes here. Um, I, you know, I, I think I think doing an out call here and there when we have new information is, is helpful, and you do a great job with it. And, uh, I actually received a call last night around seven fifteen, and I thought it was going to be you, and it was the Trump campaign. So, <laughs> um, 
anyway, I, I, I would encourage you to, uh, you know, if we do see new cases um, and they start to, to pile up, just to give a, a shout out to folks. Um, I, look, I'm by no means advocating that we have, you know, Lord, you know, daily calls and things like that. I don't think we're where we were, near where we were two, three months ago. Uh, and even then, they sometimes be intrusive, but, but I do encourage you to keep everybody in the loop. I appreciate it. We, we, we received a number of emails yesterday. Um, and let me just review what happened last week. You know, Monday, last Monday, um, this is an example of where we learn things locally before we get reports from the state. Right. So when we learned of a party that, that uh, and we had people tested with our, te our, our voluntary testing. Uh, we were very concerned that someone who would have traveled uh, back from South Carolina had brought COVID back to Canaan. Uh, that turned out to produce two individuals, one who traveled and one who attended the party. Um, and that second case we learned about on Thursday after I did my out call on Wednesday night. And then we had a case with um, a woman who had, uh, well, the, the YMCA case, which is actually, as I said in the out call, or in the email, I had to cut it out of the text because the text is limited, the verbal text is limited to three minutes, that we had a uh, boy from St who lives in Stanford which makes it a Stanford case and not a Virginia case. But since we decided to report local employer employee cases, such as Waving the Care Center and Silver Hill Hospital, in our prior, we reported that as a McCannon case. Um, and then we also had a woman who had gone in for a heart procedure. Whenever you go in the hospital right now, you're getting tested for COVID. So this woman had tested positive and was a presumptive positive. We got, we're now into this world of presumptive positives. She when she left the hospital, she tested negative twice. So we question whether that's really a positive when, when the person te tests negative twice subsequently. And then as we came into the, into the, uh, 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 there was one other case on Thursday that we learned from, I, th I think that was the woman um, in the hospital. So the, obviously there's a lot of testing going on. Anybody who goes to a hospital, any, anybody who works at a, a senior facility is being tested. And, um, and then the state took a vacation. Uh, for the first time since they started re reporting COVID, they um, they lumped all the weekend. They, they used to report daily through the weekend. Instead, they waited till Monday. And I, my email to you last night said we didn't learn till Monday night. Actually, Jen learned Monday morning. I'm sorry, Sunday night. She learned Monday morning of the five cases that were reported. Of the five, one is a family of four who had a teenager from Stanford staying at their home. That's a rather unusual case, but another indication that COVID is coming from outside of town rather than local transmission. And then there was one other 50 year old. All these cases are primarily people under 50 and in most cases, um, teenage, younger people. Um, so there's have, have been no new senior cases and um, I will do a call out tonight, but I want we wanted to put more context into it to understand whether any of the events such as the party produced any further cases, which we haven't seen any. And um, there's also a, a, a lot of confusion about when the state reports. You know, two weeks ago, the state was reporting uh, items from a month and two ago, which really screws up your numbers because all of a sudden they're presumptive positives, but they weren't reported a month or two ago. So the, the state system, I, I want to have Jen on to answer questions because the state reporting system is not 100% not, uh, not by any means, and, um, but we're much more in touch with our local facts on the ground. And... Um, so I think, um, you know, we will address uh, what transpired over the weekend. And um, the, the main point is we are seeing people uh, traveling into New Canaan from other states um, uh, or relatives. Yeah, your biggest risk in New Canaan is people, relatives coming to visit you or you going to another state coming back. Um, and uh, we appear not to have any degree really of local transmission except for people you come in contact with out of state. Um, Kevin, I, I know you've been seeing all the emails, but also in terms of hearing from people, a lot of the tech is feeling adrift. They are not getting the communication that they need. And I think it would be really good if uh, the communication were happening at least three times a week. Well, in, in fairness, I took Friday and Saturday off. I hadn't had time off since March, except for three days. 
So I did take Friday and Saturday off, you know, my fault for that. But quite honestly, we were trying to understand the picture we were seeing. And it became much more clear yesterday that we don't have cases through local transmission. We have it coming in from outside of town. So my, you know, again, I, I don't know what we talk about three days a week, but I, we, we, you know, the yeah. EOC is meeting once on Thursday mornings. And um, I don't regard this as a spike. Um, I do regard it as a warning to be careful uh, when you have relatives visiting. Uh, actually, I, I, actually, I'm sorry, the Thursday case was a woman who uh, had a wedding at her, her, uh, her house on Ponus Ridge, I shouldn't, uh, and um, with 20 relatives, one of them came from Utah and brought the, brought the you know, the, so that's how cases are coming to New Canaan. It's not local transmission. It's not I local under, under, understand, yeah. but people go downtown and they see lots of people with no masks. That's what, that's, that's not where, that's not where the cases are coming from, Kip. That's, I that's, understand, yeah, yeah. but I'm saying that there is fear in the community and they used to feel reassured by our communication system and they aren't feeling that now. Uh, you know, can I, <clears throat> I, I, I I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. I, I haven't seen that or heard that personally. Um, obviously, you've got some of the Facebook pages that kind of stir things up. But I, with respect to outcalls, to be clear, I am not saying we should be necessarily on a set, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I, I don't believe in outcalls if there's no new information. And I think, you know, if things are going along well, we don't have any new cases, Lord, we don't, God forbid, we don't have any, you know, deaths. Um, I, I, you know, I've had a lot of people who actually said they felt at some point in the process, maybe not in March, but maybe in late April, maybe in May, that the, the, the out calls, daily out calls started to become intrusive, honestly. And they were like, how, how do I get off? How do I get my phone off the, off the list? And I think there's a balance to be made. Look, I think if we have, God forbid, a spike, then I would expect to see maybe a day, maybe we go back to like daily out calls. But I think that I think the out calls should be tailored um, to the information that we receive from the state, from our own town. Uh, and if we, you know, it can, if we need an out call with respect to masks, maybe that's worthy of an out call because we we suddenly we believe that only 30% of the folks downtown are wearing masks. I totally agree with that. But I don't think we need, you know, um, to handhold the folks of New Canaan, the good folks of New Canaan, by just simply calling and to saying hi, everything's fine. I, I would agree that maybe every day is not a good idea, but I think a few times a week, even to say, you know what, nothing's happening. You yeah. know, we're good. Yeah. The, the other important factor is to remind everybody that, you know, when, when we finished our testing from last week with almost 3,200 tests of asymptomatic people, the results were startling to us that there's been um, so little, um, infection in New Canaan, which suggests that we've all done our jobs to stay home, especially the seniors. Um, and um, uh, that should give people a lot of comfort. No other town has done the degree of testing we've done locally of, of our asympt asymptomatic right. residents. And, uh, but, you know, again, the, the danger is relatives visiting or taking trips out of, out of town and bringing, the, bringing it back to New Canaan. That's what the governor yeah. said yesterday. He, he did, the Connecticut state, state statistics across the board remain very good, but he said the danger is out of state, and that's why he's de delaying indefinitely phase three, which is going to change some of people's plans for what's going to happen later in and, July. And, and, and nobody's done as much as we have in terms of testing. And Kevin, you know, that's a really good point. And people forget, look, yeah, you go to Texas, you go to Florida, and you come back here, but it's also if you go to Nantucket, or you go to Watch Hill, or you go to some, you know, Vermont and, and other places, you don't think about, it's not necessarily coming from another state that you travel to and from by air, it could be by automobile. And I think, you know, a lot of our townspeople are taking vacations um, now and over the next weeks. And I think you're right, that, that's where the danger is. It's not here in New Canaan, and can't just get to get back to your point and to finish the loop. And I, I you know, I completely respect your position. Again, I think um, the town people of of New Canaan should we should start getting into the mentality: things are fine unless you hear an out call, and then for chance, you know, if you get one out call, maybe you'll get two or three more because we have a spike again. God forbid. But I think I don't think we should be doing um, handholds, uh, handhold out calls. I'm on the wrong one. Um, the, what I would say about that is that we are hearing on the national news consistent um, updates about spikes 
And the other thing we found out about our very fine testing is that we have almost no antibodies here in New Canaan. And so we're right. Um, well, I, I, you know, to get back to your point, Mast, I, I did, I drove around, um, I think, I think on last Friday. And I'll be honest with you, um, downtown mask usage was at best 50%. So that, that is an issue. And I, again, I don't think we need mask police, but I think we need to encourage, and, and Kevin, you've been doing this all along, that people just, you know, use a mask. I know it's hot. I know it's uncomfortable. Um, but it's really the, and it, a lot of it is, is messaging. Um, so we just all need to wear a mask. I don't know why we can't have someone reminding people to wear their masks. Surely there are people working for the town that aren't fully employed at this point that could help with this. Not demand, not threaten, but request that people put their masks on. Well, certainly, Kit, when, if downtown is congested, but, you know, I see Elm Street every day and I drive by on the weekends and um, it's not nearly as congested as I would have thought. People are not flying to downtown. Um, but, you know, people, when they go in stores and when they enter a restaurant, uh, the merchants um, do require the masks. So, um, you know, we're doing what the governor, other states have fines if you don't wear a mask. Um, and, in terms of how they define it, all states though are saying when when you can't when you can't um, properly social distance. No, nobody's saying you have to have a mask everywhere outdoors. That's not the policy. No. Anyway, but downtown, it's very hard not to be within six feet of someone, and I think that I don't understand why we wouldn't try and help compliance with masks. We can't, so why don't we? I, and that's not what other towns are doing, uh, Kit. And I, I, I will, uh, uh, we're going to conform to the governor's guidance and we're going to uh, encourage masks where needed. So, I mean, I, you know, I, I already went out beyond the governor's in the beginning by saying the downtown is generally con congested and you should wear a mask. That's our policy. Yeah, well, that's correct. That, that was a more strict policy than the governor, our Democratic governor, was suggesting. Anyway, I, anything else we want, to, we want to discuss today besides uh, communication? Um, on Thursday is the cell tower um, testimony. Yes, and you had, a, you had a sign up. There's 35 people that have signed up. I'm going to testify along with John Goodwin and Lynn Abney. Uh, and, and where do you uh, find the sign up? Well, the sign up had to be done by last Thursday. They, they, they issued a public notice of the hearing. And um, so I, I submitted my request last Thursday. I, I asked for more time. It's being limited to three minutes. We're not parties to the, to the case, so we're, we're not allowed to talk more than the, anybody else in the public. Um, but the town will be, P&Z will be represented by both Lynn and uh, John, and um, I will talk for three minutes. Where would I have seen that sign up? How would I have accessed it? It was in the newspaper, and so now you can you can listen to the hearing um, at six thirty on Thursday. The, the, the town's town's website has a a notice of the uh, it's not a public notice, but it's a the contact information as to how you can listen. I th again, had I, I had I known because I didn't see the paper, I would have signed up. Anything else? None here. All right, 948, I move we adjourn. Thank you, have a nice day. Second, second here. Okay, thank you all.